Hi guys, it's Mrs. C here with Cycle 2, Week 8. So I'm just going to jump right into geography today. With geography, we have the Mid-Atlantic World. And um, oftentimes our geography is connected to our history sentence, but this week specifically, um, our history sentence is very um, location heavy. Um, so I will probably connect those two. So I will go over all the geography locations, obviously, but then I'll move right into history and use my map for history, which I'll talk about in a second. So um, for geography, I did want to mention um, our last location, which is the Treaty of Tordesillas this week. Um, I read up on that a little bit because it it's not like a, just like the Tropic of Cancer or something like that. It's a treaty line, and I was very curious why we were learning it because it, they don't talk about it in our history sentence. Um, and what it was. And so I will share with you a little tidbit of what I learned in case you're interested. And, and if you have the older class, they might want to know why they have to learn it. So this Treaty of Tordesillas um, was between Spain and Portugal. And basically it was a line that they drew and the, the, the Pope, I think, helped out with it. Um, basically to say that anything east of that line was going to be Spanish and anything west of that line was going to be um, Portuguese because there had been started to be some contentions between the two about who owned what and which lands were whose. Um, and the, that line allowed the Portuguese to keep their trade routes that had gone around Africa um, because Diaz was um, Portuguese. And so he had already established these trade routes going around Africa. They and the Portuguese king, which I think was John II of Portugal, really wanted India for himself. So they agreed that anything east of that could be Spanish and they would keep what was west of that. And so that is why when you look at the South America map that Brazil is um, Portuguese. I have a good friend from Brazil and she speaks Portuguese. And so that's why it's one of the only places in South America that speaks Portuguese and everybody else speaks Spanish. Um, obviously when you're looking at it, Brazil extends east of that line and um, Spain from what I read was actually pretty cool about that. But then they decided in the Treaty of Madrid, I believe it was where exactly um, all of those borders of Brazil were going to be. And then the rest of it was all Spanish. So um, I asked my friend who's from there, I was like, do you all study about this like in school? Like we do the Louisiana Purchase or something. She was like, yeah, we talk about it. It's like something that we learn about. It you know, was a big part of how our country came to be and why it's Portuguese and the rest of, um, is uh, Spanish. So I thought it was pretty interesting. That's why we're learning it because um, there is some conjecture. I don't know what's true and what's not. I really only read a couple articles, but that the Portuguese had already discovered the hump of South America, that part of Brazil that sticks out and knew it was there and wanted to keep that coastline for themselves. So that's why they had the line drawn where they did because they knew that was there. And if you look at old trade routes, they would actually go and stop at that part of South America that sticks out in Brazil and then they would continue on around um, Africa from there it was like a good um, stopping point to dock for a while so anyway there's my little 411 on <laughs> the Treaty of Tordesillas but that's why we're learning it with this week and our exploration so we'll go over all those for geography and then we'll move in, right into history. So in my class, I have a big laminated map that I got printed from the um, Office Max. And I will, I use that for geography. So I will use it for history. And what I intend to do is help, try to help the kids at least connect the explorers to where they were exploring because there's a lot of names and a lot of places in this sentence. And I feel like it's a little confusing, at least it is for me. The kids seem to just catch on really fast and I'm just slow. So <laughs> so what I'll do is put the names for the explorers on a post-it note or some kind of thing that I can stick up on my map. And um, the initial time through, I'll do it myself, but then I will hand them out to the kids and let them come put them up. So for example, I'll have Dias written on a post-it note and I will stick it down on the tip of Africa on the Cape of Good Hope and we'll say Dias rounded the Cape of Good Hope. And then I will have um, America Vespucci sail to the Americas. So I'll just stick it somewhere probably on the, the east, southeast coast of the Americas. And then, excuse me, since Balboa crosses Central America, um, I might stick it in the blown up area on our map. But I also, I don't know, it just kind of depends on 
I think I probably will stick it on the blown up part of the map because I want them to know that that's Central America and that that's where he was going through. And you can see it a little bit better. So you can put it there or you can put it right in the actual location of Central America. Um, and then Magellan, so Magellan sails around the whole globe, so you could really put them anywhere, but I'll probably put them down on the Strait of Magellan just because of connecting those names there. And then Coronado with the Southwest, I'll put somewhere down in probably the Mexico region. So um, we'll stick all of those up there. And then again, I'll take them off, hand them to the kids, let them come up and put them in the correct locations as we kind of sing through or say through the song. And we'll do that a few times. And then once they're up there, we'll just kind of sing through the song while pointing to them on those locations again. If you don't have a big map, um, that's totally fine. This might be a, a good week to, um, I don't wanna say cheat, but do a printed thing, which we try not to do a lot in class, but print off. Um, I thought it'd be fun to do matching where you have all of the explorers on one side and then all the locations on the other side. And you just have the kids, especially and this might be great for the little kids too, where you have them connect the different um, explorers to the locations that they explored. So that's another option if you don't have a large map. Um, but that's what I will do for history for this week. Um, moving into math, so we have the 14s, and I feel like the 13s and 14s, you just have to memorize them. Um, they, they're just, I don't know, I have a hard time with the 14s. I don't know why. 13s seems slightly easier, but the 14s, I just have a hard time remembering all of them. So um, what I'm going to do for this week is bring in my math facts wheel. So they look like this. I have them in page protectors or uh, shop ticket holders. And you put the number that you're doing on that week and then you write the answers are on the outside. So I will probably uh, be speaking through the 14s as I give them a chance to fill in their own math fact wheel. Once everybody gets theirs filled in, we'll go through and we'll say our math facts and then we'll probably sing through the skip counting song a couple times um, as we move around the math fact wheel. So that's my plan for math. If I can find the link to that, cause I've had those for a while, I will try to find the link and put it in the description of this video. Sometimes I get a lot of people that are like, I can't find where the description is right underneath where you are seeing me. There should be the title of the video and then there should be a little blurb that says something like, ideas for presenting new grammar for classical conversations. And there is a generally a little like carrot thing that's next to it. And if you click on it, it should open up a larger description box and there will be the links to the things that I say that there are links to. 90% of the time. <laughs> Sometimes I think I say there's links and then I forget to put them in there and you guys correct me on that and then I go and add them. But there should be a link if I can find it to the math wheel. I will put it down there. Um, all right. So for Latin this week, we have our second week of perfect tense. Again, our remembrance for this is Mary. So E is the it. Um, Mary Poppins was practically perfect in every way. And that's how we are remembering that perfect tense begins with E. So um, you can go through that. Uh, for my older kids, we've been going through Latin really fast. Um, it's just been they know them, they've had them several times, a few of them, and they're just not something that we have to spend a ton of time on. They catch on very quickly to the chance. So I've been doing it basically where we just start at a normal voice and then we just slowly say them quieter and quieter until we're literally just mouthing the words and no sound is coming out. And they seem to really enjoy doing that and it's easy and it doesn't take very much time at all. If you have a younger class and you want to um, do something a little more involved because they're still kind of learning it. Um, this would be a fun week for, because it's our sec your second week of doing it, for doing hot potato where you pass it around and whoever ends up um, with the ball at the end of the chant, they, I don't know. I don't know if it's just like, oh no, you have to do, I don't know, 10 jumping jacks or whatever. You can do that. Or you could do duck duck goose, which is where you tap heads and they run them out of the chant and whoever ends at tense is how it ends. So whoever you tap on tense, um, they get up and chase the other person around just like you did in grade school. And um, the only difference is I don't play anybody gets out or has to sit in the middle. It's just, you take turns. So um, if you do have the younger class and you're doing that, um, I would tell them who to start on tapping and kind of pay attention so that everybody gets a chance um, because sometimes you'll have the kids will start with the same person or they'll um, 
they'll skip somebody and then not everybody gets a chance to be the chaser and the person that's um, doing the tapping. I don't know what you call that person. Are they the ducker? I don't know, anyway. Are you coming to say hello? No. No, <laughs> you being shy. So that's Latin for science this week. We have aquatic biomes. Can you say biomes, Olivia? No. No, okay. So um, I didn't say it in the video, but I did, it, I did end up doing it in class because inspiration comes to me at 10 p.m. the night before a CC. But um, hey, hey, be careful. You can play with that, but stop shaking the table. Um, but I did already use the baby shark song with pronouns because pronouns are avoid repetition and there's nothing more repetitive than the baby shark song. But it also goes really well for aquatic biomes and obviously sharks live in the ocean and seas. So um, I will sing that for you if you have uh, the littles and want to do a song for it. We have, what are some do 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 aquatic biomes do 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 some aquatic do 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 the biomes are. You like that one? Yeah. And then you would say ponds and lakes do 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 streams and rivers do 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 wetlands and estuaries do 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 oceans and seas. Wetlands and estuaries is a little bit of a stretch, but it works and little kids love that song. And you can sing it multiple times. So um, that is an idea for the older kids. I thought it might be a good time to get up and move. So I might uh, put some papers up in my class in the maybe the different corners or on the different walls of ponds and lakes, streams and rivers, wetlands and estuaries and oceans and seas. And as we say them, um, I would have them run to whichever one and I would probably do some out of order. So I'd be like, all right, wetlands and estuaries and they have to run over to wetlands and estuaries and then I might say ponds and lakes and have them run to that one um, if we need to get up and move in class. Um, you could also, if you don't have um, a ton of space to move, you could uh, write them out individually. So write pond on a card and lake on a card oceans sees on separate cards and separate them and then have them try to find the matches so play like a matching game and match them up together um or you could even hand them out to each other put them on their back like we've done for timeline have them find the match for who they go with so those are just some different ways that you could do science for this week um but I'm a fan of the song and I will probably sing the song in class and then might do something else with it. Uh, for English, we have our reflexive pronouns. What are you talking about? Chips. Chips? You want some chips? No. Can you show them what you have on your hands? <gasps> are you playing with my baby hands? <laughs> Those are funny, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, I'll get you some chips in a minute. Go play. Um, so for English, we have reflexive pronouns. So I will probably uh, bring in a couple of mirrors because our reflexive pronouns are reflecting back on us and our mirror reflects our reflection. So just to kind of um, get that solidified in their brain that these are reflecting back. So when I look in a mirror, I see myself. When you look in the mirror, you see yourself. When he looks in the mirror, he sees himself and kind of go around and do it like that and then give them kind of turns um, with the mirror. Uh, for younger ones, if you have the ability to have a mirror for everyone, it might be a good thing so that they're not fighting over it, or you might be the only one that holds a mirror. Um, that's what I will probably do for the reflexive pronouns, um, just again to remind them that it all ends with self or selves, and talk about really quick the difference between, because we have our singular and our plural, so the singular is self and the plural is selves, and just you know make a point of that with them. So myself, yourself, himself, himself, wow, himself, herself, itself, um, ourselves, yourselves, themselves. We'll just go over those with the mirror. And then let's see, we're down to timeline. So for timeline, we have Council of Nicaea. So that was where they were deciding that uh, about the Trinity, so it was three and one. So you're gonna have a three, this is sign language three, and it's going to come under a hand that where your palm is facing you under, and when it comes out on the other side, there's only one. So from the side, it looks like this three and one. And then Augustine of Hippo, we're gonna make an A, and he converted to Christianity. So we're gonna do the sign for change. Oh, I have a hard time when I look in the camera. <laughs> I see myself doing it in front of me. So we're gonna make X's on our fingers, which just look like little hooks. And then we're going to put our wrists like this, and then you're going to flip flop them. So this is the sign for change, and this, you can go back and forth that, he, that they change. So Augustine of Hippo. 
Then we have Jerome. We're gonna make a J for Jerome. And he completes the Vulgate, which is the Latin version of the Bible that we learn next cycle, learning John 1, 1 through 7. So that's the Latin Vulgate that we learn. So it completes the Vulgate. Then we have V for the Visigoths. And we do this in the Vikings raid and trade, but it's so fast that you don't really do it very much. So we're gonna sack, so we're just taking things, we're getting whatever we want, we're reading it, taking. So Visigoths sack, and then we're gonna make an R for Rome and an R is just your fingers crossed. Then the Middle Ages, it's very like corally, so, and it's long, so you can, you know, do this if you need to. But we're gonna have a flat hand and we're gonna scoop around and then bring our hand down right into the middle so that our, this hand has our fingers pointed down and it's right in the middle. So the Middle Ages. And then Council of Chalcedon was where they were deciding um, that Christ was fully deity, but also fully man at the same time. So it's two, and then for Christ, you touch your hands where the nails went into his hands. So we have that he was two beings in one. And then let's see, Western Roman Empire. So we have a W, and we're gonna move it away from our body towards the West. Oh, excuse me. R for Rome falls. And then even though it's like this really pretty I can't sing very high, I'm an alto, but you get to go like this her, when you're singing Barbarians in that high voice. So it's a real juxtaposition there, <laughs> but this for Barbarians. So um, I'm not gonna really uh, go over what I would do for Timeline because it really is just based on my mood and what the class needs to do. Timeline's typically the last thing that I do. So if we're doing great on time, I will do something more involved like the bomb, bomb game. If we're running short on time, then I literally might just go through the cards a couple of times with them um, and uh, take one out and let them see if they can figure out what I took out. Something that's a little faster than the bomb game or one of the other ones that take time like putting them on their back. So if you are looking for new ideas on what to do for timeline, I did do a video on that. Um, I will put the link to that also in the description and hopefully uh, that will be helpful to you, more helpful than me saying here what I did. So anyway, um, I hope you guys have an awesome week. Um, I will be back soon here doing the rest of this quarter so that I can have those up for you all and they'll be ready. And I'm hoping to also this weekend do a video specifically about 10 Whistle. Um, I know that there are people who already have those out there, but just in case I have anything to add that would be helpful, I will try to get that out there. So I will see you guys back soon. Thanks. Bye.